Great. How's everyone doing tonight? Awesome. Great. So, um, had a chance to kind of look at the rest of their presentation, so I just wanted to make it more like informational for you guys. So I'm going to probably do it from more from my, my perspective of things as a, a technical background. But uh, my talk is going to be around engineering influence and growth. So get started. Um, before I get further into it, I just want to give you a little bit about my background. So um, I'm a little bit different. I actually did have a technical background, CS uh, major from Stanford. But me, I've been involved in entertainment for a bit. Um, you probably recognize Ken Jong and a few others. I actually had one of Daniel Lin Kim. I'm not sure how many people watched Hawaii Five out here. So, but uh, yeah. So for me, um, it was a really cross between both kind of entertainment and tech. Um, so for me, I, I look at things more of a software perspective, how you can scale things and how you can utilize, obviously with social influence nowadays, we're all using different social platforms and they're all technology based. So um, we're going to talk about some quotes really quick, but um, how many of you guys have heard of this one? People do not buy goods and services, but they buy relations, stories, and magic. Another one you guys are probably more familiar with, uh, it's a pretty infamous TED talk, is people don't buy what you do, but they buy why you do it. So this is kind of leading into where content is king. And obviously with content creators and influencers, content could be video, images, you know, media assets. Um, but the way I like to look at it is content is king, data is the kingdom. So when we look at, hello, okay, there we go. So data is the kingdom. Um, so the, what this is leading towards is from my perspective of things, when you work with influencers, they're obviously great. You have a lot of uh, impact there, but a lot of it's kind of spray and pray a bit too. So how many people here have heard of growth engineering? Okay, a few. How about growth hacking? Okay, a little bit more. So for me, the term is a little bit trendy. Uh, when people talk about growth hacking, it's kind of, for me, usually marketers who are talking about strategies, right, around how to kind of do grayer and tactics to gain growth and uh, have conversions. Well, for me, I'm coming from a computer science background, I looked at it where if you're actually doing these type of tactics, you have to utilize a lot of software and scripts. So when I looked at this, it was more of a growth engineering perspective, was really about how to use data, how to use, like, data mining, machine learning, and aspects of automation to really grow something. So that is kind of where I'm going to be talking about this presentation along with the influencers' perspective, but um, there are different types of influencers too. So we have, obviously, it's just a small list of different types of content creators and influencers, um, but there are different types based on their influence as well. So actually, these are kind of from my experiences uh, working with influencers, but uh, you have the high reach and low reach influencers. Uh, actually, uh, interestingly, uh, I don't know most people know, but it's actually an inverse relationship. So when you have a high reach influencer, they typically are, they have a lot of awareness and impressions, but in terms of conversions, sometimes they're lower, not all the time, but there are definitely moments, uh, which I should actually give an example of after this. Uh, in terms of a low reach influencer, we have seen a lot of between 10 to 100,000, 300,000 followers gaining a lot of engagement and conversions, sometimes significantly more, uh, or just in terms of ratio wise. So, we actually, uh, my co-founder and I, we actually built an app that got featured on the Ellen Show. So when we talked with the producers and the network, they had quoted us 75 million viewers who are watching her show. Obviously, everyone here is probably familiar with Ellen Generous. So um, she's quite big, uh, definitely on the A-list side of things. But when we had our app uh, promoted on there, it was just one of those things where we looked at it at the industry standard rates of conversions, which is anywhere between 1% to 4%. Uh, we ended up seeing closer to 0.26. Uh, which is a little ridiculous, you would think her reach would be higher. Uh, but just because I think she's more mainstream, and because it's also a television format, it's a little bit different. So that's an example of a high reach influencer that might not necessarily you know, translate directly to high downloads. Uh, there's other factors, obviously, as well. Normal people don't like ads. Uh, another reason is there's just too many choices. There, it's a very saturated market out there. So there's a lot of different brands and products. And consumers want authenticity. So I think that's a big part of it. When they're working with these type of people, they're looking at it as people versus a brand. Um, these are three examples, actually. Um, I don't know if anyone saw the taco emoji. Uh, so Taco Bell wanted to support a campaign to bring the taco emoji to real life. And um, they were trying to connect with the millennials. So this is actually a really successful campaign where they actually finally got through so many signatures for that. 
Uh, so it was a little bit intense for, for a taco emoji. Uh, and then honesty in people and not faceless corporations. So um, actually, this is a good example of one that Mercedes did with Casey Neistat. Um, this one was interesting because Casey really focuses on kind of engagement with his audiences. Uh, he's a YouTuber, pretty, pretty awesome content because he really goes and makes it so it's less of a commercial and more of an experience that you're having with him. Uh, pretty fun videos that he makes as well. So. so this is actually an example from our company, Pixery. So we actually tried working with a lot of nonprofits um, through our influencers. And we actually saw that charities themselves are kind of influencers as well, um, at least in terms of awareness and audience base. So we actually saw a 30% increase when we started integrating a social impact cause onto our platform. Uh, and it just does show you can actually make money while doing good. And I think that's a pretty important lesson to learn. But most people overlook that when they're looking at working with influencers or working with content creators. Uh, if you have a, an aspect that is a social impact, it does help a lot. And then with Pixery, like I said, uh, another thing is people usually typically get free products and whatnot. Um, this is a more subtle way of working with some, uh, someone. Uh, I feel like collaborations is a better term versus just a sponsorship. Or, okay, that's not bad. All right, um, and then having them kind of collaborate with the brand. So some takeaways, I want to keep this kind of short, but um, yeah, the idea is really creating the long-term relationships. You don't want to just go and find influencers and content creators that you're just gonna to want to like work with one time and then spray and pray and then you don't really see much growth. You really want to build a relationship with them and show that it's more authentic of a relationship versus I'm just paying you or you know there's some kind of uh, transaction. And then creating useful content, um, I think that's along with staying relevant. It's pretty important. Typically, that could be video content, you know, content for you know Instagram, Facebook. Um, but the idea really is to create something that does provide value back versus just something that's an ad based thing. And then um, for me, data being data driven, so always analyzing what you're doing and don't just do a campaign based on what, you're, what you want. Uh, you want to really focus more on, all right, I'm doing this, let's test this out with this specific person. And from there, you can kind of see how you can utilize that and kind of adapt to what the audiences are reacting. So that's important as well. So anyways, um, yeah, so that's my, uh, that's our info if you want to contact us at Pixery. Um, I'm actually going to be giving a talk at the, the SARC Showcase, so you'll learn more about Pixery there. I want to keep this one. Panel. So, yeah.